here and I've got an interesting replay for you here in light of the uh, new uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, upcoming uh, patch uh, update which is going to give us all the new Japanese uh, destroyer line I figured I would show this video now I, I don't I originally made a video that I was going to put up on YouTube the only problem was it ended up being 51 minutes long because I just went too in-depth on everything. <laughs> and I decided I would just redo the, the video entirely just based off of the replay here and keep it as short as possible. But as you know, we're getting... Uh, the entire Japanese destroyer line is totally being reworked. The old ships are being reworked and then we're getting a completely new line of quote-unquote gunboats. Now, my own take on this is that um, this uh, the the changes? Let's put changes in parentheses. Uh, the changes to the line. Uh, some people are saying that they're going to be fantastic. That overall they're a buff. Um, however, I would suggest that if you're going to look at all the videos that are out there from the various uh, wargaming contributors on the new Japanese line, I would really look at Jingles video, the mighty Jingles. I think his video, and yes, my captain agrees. Uh, I think he gives the fairest, uh, most uh, uh, unbiased uh, view of the of the line. For me, just looking at the stats, I have not played any of the ships. I didn't go into the open test to uh, try them out, so I can't really say one way or another until I get a hold of the ships tomorrow. But uh, looking at the stats and everything, honestly, I view it more as a, as a nerf to the line more than uh, as them buffing the line. Yes, they've increased the rate of fire a bit on the guns of some of the ships, but they've taken away, uh, they've lowered the damage potential of the shells. Then they've lowered the uh, uh, chance to cause a fire with the HE shells. So while they've buffed the rate of fire, at the end of the day, there's really not going to be a change to the damage per minute. So these ships, are, even the gunboats, are not really going to be competitive against the American and Russian DDs. Now the reason I'm, I'm focusing, uh, I brought up uh, this replay, is because there's so much battleship commanders and cruiser commanders they cry so much and get on the forums and constantly gripe and uh complain that carriers are overpowered destroyers are overpowered torpedoes are overpowered uh it just gets ridiculous and um while Wargaming will say, oh no, we don't listen to these complaints. Honestly, I believe they do, to, to a large extent. And it's kind of a shame, because Wargaming's dumbing the game down. Now, in this game here, there, I'm gonna, we're going to be looking at three players. We have the Tier 7, you're going to have the Tier 7 Huryu Driver, and uh, you're going to have the uh, Tier 7... Um, Nagato player, and we're going to be looking at the tier 5 German battleship Koenig player on the enemy team. Now, here I am in a tier 5 ship. Uh, I've got my best captain, a 16 point captain, so my uh, uh, concealment is down to uh, 5.4 kilometers range, and of course, I've got 7 kilometer torpedoes. Uh, 68 knot uh, speed on those torpedoes. Now, the thing is, uh, this game, <laughs> this game is honestly going to show you the, the, 
what I believe the, these three guys of, of these three ships are most probably your atypical World of Warship players that complain and gripe about overpowered ships or overpowered weapon systems like torpedoes or destroyers. And uh, these are the guys that get on the forum boards and just rage and rage and rage that the game is ruined by destroyer players and by torpedoes. And the sad thing is that you're going to see in this game with this uh, replay, um, you really got to question, are the, is it that the destroyers are over, overpowered? Or is it that the players are simply too lazy to... Uh, play the game properly to they're not putting any effort into playing or learning to play their ships better now here as you can see the Huryu's already been spotted a couple of times I, I saw the guy was there while I was capping a so uh, I decided hey I want to get rid of him but at the same time I'm question I also wanted to go after the after the battleship but as you can see the New York he was coming towards A, but as soon as he saw he was spotted, he knew, hey, the destroyer that took A is coming my way. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going to join up with the rest of my fleet, have a little more protection. So he's left. But in the meantime, the carrier operator hasn't moved. So I'm banking that the guy is too fixated on running his aircraft. And so I've launched all my torpedoes directly at him. And yet at the same time while I did this, I'm watching and I'm really expecting him to, you know, put, put the ship to full throttle and get the hell out. And I'm kind of cursing at myself going, I should have put a couple of torpedoes, aimed a couple of those torpedoes ahead of the carrier, anticipating him moving. But he never moved, even though he was spotted. And that's one of the things. Wargaming has already indirectly nerfed uh, the entire destroyer line. You see, he never moved. He's dead. He's gone. And the sad thing here, this shouldn't have happened because Wargaming has already done uh, a bunch of indirect nerfs to the Japanese destroyer line as it is. They gave all captains situational awareness as a, an automatic skill that even a zero uh, point skill captain has the skill to tell you I've been spotted. Uh, so they gave they gave uh, ships they gave the uh, all the commanders that. Then they added they went and. Um, uh, buffed the turning radius on a lot of the battleships um, to make them more maneuverable. They then added uh, not only the original uh, rudder shift uh, uh, module that will allow you to decrease uh, the rudder shift time, but then they created a new rudder uh, uh, shift module that you can add the two together and you get an even greater uh, faster rudder shift time um, to get your ship turning quicker on top of that they also uh, gave the captains the ability they increased the acquisition range of when torpedoes are spotted as they're coming towards your ship uh, so they added that to um, for all the players uh, all of this uh, indirectly nerfing destroyers ability to uh, successfully torpedo you so long as you're using these things that wargaming has given you but the sad thing is is that instead of players taking advantage of these things instead players have gotten lazier and lazier they don't want to think. They they want everything handed to them, and wargaming has really started doing this a lot. Now, as you can see um, here, the Minikaze has decided to try and take the cap <coughs> rather than going for our carrier player. And I've got to hand it. 
give credit to uh, Howard uh, Benson, who's the uh, operator of our carrier. The guy is an excellent carrier driver. He kept his fighters over the enemy carrier. I mean, over the enemy destroyer. Kept him lit up. <laughs> He's also lighting up the torpedoes for me. So, uh, I can uh, see the torpedoes. More easily avoid them. And he managed to do a blind drop, a uh, manual drop with his uh, bombers and took the uh, finished the guy off. So he's gone. So uh, that's the difference between the carrier players uh, of these two teams. We had a very good carrier operator who, as you can see, he's keeping his carrier moving. He saw the threat with the destroyer and immediately took action. Whereas the other carrier operator didn't do a damn thing. Uh, just sat there, let his carrier sit there and get uh, sniped. Now, of course, like I say, he's the kind of guy, I'll bet any money, he's either sending a ticket into Wargaming or he'll be on the forum boards complaining about how overpowered destroyers are and that they shouldn't be able to nail him like that. Uh, and that's a shame, you know, that... Wargaming, I mean, I am a very invested player in Wargaming's titles, uh, specifically World of Tanks and World of Warships. I own 121 ships in World of Warships right now. I have a fleet of 121 ships, 121 docking uh, spaces. In World of Tanks, I have over 300 tanks in my garage. That I, that I play, but sadly, as time has gone on, Wargaming has taken what, what was a fantastic game, both games, started out as being very, uh, you, they, were, they were games that made you think, uh, tactically, uh, how to play your various ships, and over time, they've, they've started to dumb the game down both of these games to the point where I, I rarely play World of Tanks these days. Uh, once in a while I'll get in because I have friends that play World of Tanks that do not play World of Warships and so to visit with them I'll, I'll get on and play a few games but I, I'm not playing the way I used to because over time with the changes they've made that have simplified things, I mean now they're even putting up a thing where when a tank fires at you, you'll get an arrow pointing exactly to where that tank uh, fired from. And to me, I think that's wrong. I mean, you already get a thing that shows you the general direction the shell came from. Why do they have to add a, uh, a modification into the game to, you know, pinpoint, there's where the tank fired from, right there. And they want to, uh, from what I hear, they want to add that to this game as well, which I just think is retarded in the extreme. So anyway, here, as you can see, I, I try to be a team player. I wanted to keep that now in the game, keep his guns in the game. So I gave him a smoke screen so that, uh, you know, to keep him in the game. He's almost a one-shot kill. Now here we have the other two guys I was talking about. We have the Nagato and we have the Koenig. Now, my location here, uh, I would love to fire at the Nagato, but from where I am and where he is, even if I turned in such a way to come where I was paralleling him, it's not as likely my torpedoes will reach him. Uh, whereas, I'm ahead of the Koenig. So, as I turn in, now the the replay has, this is the typical replay bug, it shows me focusing on the Nagato. I've already targeted the Koenig. And, as you can see, neither one of these guys have changed course or speed. They're, they're staying on a constant heading, constant speed. 
And so I've gotten ahead of the uh, Koenig so that I know that from this point, firing my torpedoes towards him, um, they're going to have a shorter distance. He's not going to be outrunning them unless he completely does a 90-degree turn, which he hasn't done at this point. So he's still holding his course. And this Nagato has done the same thing. The Farragut fired torpedoes from smoke and took him out. All six of my torpedoes hit that Koenig. All six of them hit because he just stayed same speed, same course. Now here, the guy who's running the Nagato starts to complain about invisible ships. And the sad thing here is what you're looking at is he should have seen the smoke screen from where he was that the Farragut uh, put up. That should have warned him right away that there was a destroyer nearby. And he should have started to take evasive action. He should have assumed there were torpedoes in the water at that point. But instead, he didn't. And here he is complaining that he didn't see the destroyer. He didn't know the destroyer was there. And the torpedoes, uh, he didn't see them until they were right on top of him. Well, why? Is that because the torpedoes were invisible? No. It's because he was too fixated on trying to hit the battleship. And he wasn't watching around him. But these are the kind of guys that will go into the forum board, that will put support tickets into Wargaming, to tell the devs how upset they are over destroyers being OP, and in reality, that's not the case. Uh, it's their gameplay that needs to be improved. And, um, like I say, it, it, I just find it sad that, uh, that Wargaming caters to people to the point where it's like, oh yeah, this ship is... Uh, doing too well. Well, you got to ask, why is it doing so well? Is it doing well because it is OP, or is it doing well because the level of player skills is becoming more and more inadequate in the game? As more and more, yes, more and more inadequate. As uh, <clears throat> we just seem to be getting players that. They want everything handed to them these days. It's, you know, I want to know exactly where I'm being shot from. I want to know this. They don't want to spend any time learning the mechanics of the various ship classes and uh, improving their skills. Now, it, uh, you know, I, on the one hand, you could argue and say, well, they're making the, the Japanese destroyers a, a little more uh, challenging um, to play and that's a good thing that's one of the reasons why I'm not completely bashing the line you know plus I haven't played the new ships yet I'm gonna have to try them out myself and and see how they work um, and I like a challenge but it's just for me to nerf ships make them almost unplay make them where they're very difficult to play to be successful in uh while uh having other ships that are um easy to play uh for players um i think it it, it hurts the uh the game i'm here the the whole purpose for me of playing uh, online games is that I want to uh, test myself against other uh, human beings, other players. I don't want to play against a computer opponent. Uh, if I wanted to do that, I'd play co-op. Um, that's what makes the, the real purpose of online gaming is to play these random battles against other people. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to play against players who are as competitive as you are. Uh, that they um, are doing their best, trying their best to play their ships. And um, 
then it, you get more enjoyment out of the game, especially when you're successful. Uh, to be honest, this replay that I that I showed you here, you know, normally when I get a when I hit a ship with torpedoes, uh, it's very gratifying. Um, but honestly, that particular game. I didn't find either one of the two kills that I got, uh, the, the uh, aircraft carrier uh, or the Koenig, neither one of them were really gratifying to me because neither player was putting any effort into avoiding getting hit. They, the, the, the aircraft carrier player completely ignored his carrier and just focused on aircraft and I realize carriers uh, operating a carrier is tough but we're talking a guy running a tier 7 carrier and um, I mean I own a Huryu I actually have a Huryu you can see it right here currently I don't have the, the captain I've put elsewhere um, I really don't play the ship uh, even though I've got it fully outfitted. Uh, when I do play it, I take it to co-op because that way I'm not hurting a team by my inept, uh, ineptness at, uh, at playing a carrier uh, proficiently enough to be in a random battle. So I'm not going to saddle um, a team that's competing in randoms uh, with me trying to learn how to play a carrier. To learn how to play a carrier properly uh, when I feel, when I'm in the mood to try running a carrier, I take it into co-op and play it there. Mainly I got the carrier out of historic, for historic value. The, the, I'd like to have the Huryu, the Shokaku. Uh, I'd love to see Wargaming add the Akagi and the Kaga to the game. Um beautiful ship but uh, I just don't feel I'm good enough at running carriers to saddle a team <laughs> with me running a carrier I just I, I, I don't think that's fair to a team so when it comes to the difficulty of the ships after carriers destroyers are the most difficult ship I feel to play because they're the most unforgiving ship of the three they have the least hit points, they have no armor. Um, if you make a mistake, you know, chances are it's a mistake that that is going to cost you heavily. If, if, it, if you don't get sunk, you come away losing most of your hit points. Uh, so, for that reason, that's why I like playing destroyers. Uh, I also love to play cruisers. Uh, cruisers are, I feel, they're to me they're like medium tanks in World of Tanks, which that's my favorite class of tank to play. So I like playing cruisers because they're kind of a do everything ship. Um, they're almost as powerful as battleships. They've got uh, good speed that they can get where they need to go quickly and get out of trouble quickly. And um, so I enjoy the I enjoy these ships. I don't enjoy to me battleships are the easiest, most forgiving class of ship to play because they've got it all. They usually have very good anti-aircraft capability. They've got armor. Uh, they've got the big guns. I mean, they can flatten a cruiser in a couple of broadsides if the cruiser is dumb enough to travel in a straight line. Um, <laughs> to me the the battleships are the no-brainers you know it's uh, but to me they're boring i know that there are plenty of players out there that will play nothing but battleships because of the history involved you know the ships like the bismarck or the yamato <clears throat> the north carolina the iowa the texas uh, you know all of these ships uh, famous uh, warships, the Arizona. I own an Arizona. I th there are times I do enjoy playing it, but overall, I'm not a big battleship player because, to me, 
the battleships are the easiest class to play. To me, they're not a challenge. You're just, it's almost like arty to me, the way I view artillery. And I'm not knocking artillery um, in World of Tanks, but with World of... Uh, with World of Warships, the battleships are point and click. You know, it's okay, the ship's been spotted, he's in my range, fire a broadside of shells, and uh, hope they hit, and then angle your armor, waiting for the return salvo. Um, and with all the things they've added, when I play battleships, I can avoid destroyer torpedoes, unless... The guy is really good, and he not only fires uh, a salvo of torpedoes at the direction I'm going, but he also goes, hey, I got a feeling the guy's going to turn. I'll fire another brace of torpedoes off in this direction, thinking he's most probably going to change course. But again, by doing that, you, at the very least, if you're... If you're using the WASD keys, which they're the most OP thing in World of Warships, I got to tell you, WASD on the keyboard, that's the most OP hack in the game. And everybody should learn to use those four keys. And constantly change course, constantly change direction, because by doing that, you will avoid the majority. You won't be taking six torpedo hits like the Koenig driver did from me in the uh, <laughs> in the video in the uh, replay. Um, if you use the WASD keys, you may be able to keep your carrier in action and not take five torpedo hits that hit your state your stationary carrier that's just floating there doing nothing. Um, Hopefully, if, if, if I can say anything, and I'm going to put up another video, I'm going to make another video here uh, where I'm going to um, uh, show you a replay I had with my Otago and um, how that went. And the Otago, uh, hopefully I can, I can give an example to Battleship players um, to uh, help you guys out, you know, help out cruiser players as well in showing you what you should be doing. I mean, you never, if you're traveling in a straight line longer than 30 seconds, that's too long, especially if you're spotted. I mean, it's one thing if you haven't been spotted, yeah, you get where you want to go, you know, travel in a straight line. But as soon as that situational awareness warning comes up that you have been spotted, that's when you start changing direction, changing course, changing speed, and doing it randomly. Because you should start immediately thinking, number one, I'm, I'm seen. Any ship that, that has the range to reach me is most probably going to be aiming their guns at me. Number two, what the hell has spotted me? It, it, was it aircraft? Or was it a destroyer that I haven't seen yet? And if you don't know what spotted you, you can't see it, uh, then you should assume there's a destroyer in the area. And again, you should start adjusting course and speed to throw the aim off of that destroyer captain so that his torpedoes miss you. So anyway, until next time, I want to thank everybody that's bared with this... Uh, uh, rant or <laughs> discussion here, however you want to term it. But for those of you that have uh, gone the distance and uh, and watched this entire video, I hope I've been able to impart some information and also, you know, show uh, World of Warships uh, the uh, devs that you know they need to be looking at at the players that are complaining about. Uh, about certain ships and uh, and start really looking at these guys and and for those of you who believe that certain ships are overpowered be it you hate destroyers or you hate aircraft carriers or you hate battleships you're a cruiser driver and you cannot stand battleships obliterating you every game you play 
instead of coming away from a game where you've been sunk and wanting to rage about the ships that sank you and how you got sunk, what you really need to do is change your thinking a little bit and instead come out of the game and ask yourself why did I get sunk what happened that I got sunk could I have done anything differently to have avoided taking the damage that I took if you start and think of the game that way you'll start and improve your gameplay and I mean, what I'm telling you here, I'm primarily a destroyer player. I love playing battleships too at times. I, I do enjoy battleships occasionally. I, I love playing my cruisers, but I am primarily a destroyer player. And the information I'm trying to impart to you, to everybody out there, is actually going to hurt me in terms of my win rate and uh, my damage and everything because um, I'm going to see less games like this last replay but the thing is is I do want to challenge but I don't want to be challenged by uh, the ships I'm up against I want to be challenged by the skill of the players that I am facing that's what I do online gaming for that's what I look for with online gaming I want other players to challenge me in terms of, of their skills versus my skills in the game. I don't want it to be simply an RNG thing or simply, hey, that guy's got a way more powerful ship and there's no way my ship can deal with him. Um, I hope you understand that. I hope I got my... I hope I, I've gotten my point kind of across here. But uh, what I'm telling you to do, use the WASD keys, uh, change your speed and everything else. It will make it harder for players like me, destroyer players like me, to hit you with our torpedoes. Um, it will make it harder for us to sink you. Um <laughs> You know, I mean, that's all I can say here is, you know, I, I want you guys to to improve your gameplay and, you know, put a little more effort into uh, how you play the game, not just sit there and constantly gripe and expect the company to give you things uh, to uh, uh, to do the work for you. Um there's already plenty of, of things out there to help you in the game. Um, if you can't deal with playing battleships in that as the game currently is, and I'm talking before the update, then maybe you should be playing another game. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, I, I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't own any stock in the company, so I can say that, I guess. You know, I, I'm sure... Wargaming uh, will be a little upset at me for you know stating something like that, but it, I honestly uh, join. I honestly started playing these games to um, uh, for a challenge, and to me, it, it's like Wargaming is taking the the challenge out of the game and and just encouraging people not to think, uh, not to use their heads when they play this game. Uh, or when they play World of Tanks. And I really hope that Wargaming comes to their senses on that and uh, really starts, uh, you know, yes, do ships need balance? Yeah, sure they do. You know, balance is a constant thing. But um, not to the point where you're, you're totally destroying a line of ships. And the Japanese line of destroyers had a very unique uh, situation about it. Uh, they really weren't uh, anti-destroyer ships. They were specifically ships built to target cruisers, battleships, and carriers, uh, not other destroyers, whereas American destroyers, Russian destroyers, were built more to uh, be versatile, not only uh, to fight uh, the enemy ships but uh, with torpedoes, 
but to also deal with enemy destroyers, enemy uh, torpedo boats, things like that. So anyway, yes, uh, I'm going to end this rant. Um, be looking for my next video, which will be on the Otago. Uh, it'll be a kind of companion video to this, uh, and I will make it a lot shorter than this one. But uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, has endured this and uh, seen this video all the way through. And again, um, I hope it helps you. And uh, feel free to leave me some comments, even if you don't agree with me. Uh, uh, I'm always open to other players' opinions. Even if I don't necessarily agree with them, I can respect your point of view. And I hope you'll take this video in the same vein and uh, respect my point of view. And uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you out there on the, on the ocean. And if I don't see you and you're out there playing, uh, sink a few for me, will you? All right, take care, everybody.